Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here. Welcome back to the channel. Today we are doing the last module, I guess last section module, whatever you want to call it, of Linux fundamentals. Uh, this is about some of the networking oriented stuff and kind of to conclude the course. So let's jump into it. But actually, before we do, feel free to uh, check out cosmodiumcs.com slash courses. There you can check out this course and plenty of other courses for free without the ads and uh, you know more content and stuff. It's really cool. Um, but yeah, so I definitely suggest checking it out and uh, yeah, but anyways, let's jump into this thing. Um, we have, yeah, networking and conclusion. So we're going to talk about some basic bash networking syntax. Now I'll actually move this over here, make everything easier for us. And uh, there you go. Cool. So let's talk about bash networking syntax, right? So um, the first thing we can do is check out our interface configuration. So if config. What this does is it shows again our interface configuration. So basically all the in internet interfaces that we have will be shown here. So we can see here we have e Ethernet 0. So that represents our Ethernet connection. Um, that Ethernet connection is basically being shared from this virtual machine to our uh, from our host computer, which is hosting the virtual machine. Um, apart from this, we also have um, something called the WLAN and the WLAN would be for wireless, um, while the Ethernet, ETH0 is for um, uh, Ethernet oriented things, right? So this is our IP address on the network. Now this is our um, public IP address. This is not our private IP address, so this doesn't matter too, too much. If you're on the same network, then this would matter, right? So this would be like the IP address what you would target if you were on the same network. Uh, this is the type of thing I meant by uh, understanding some basic networking stuff, uh, but this will come important later, so just kind of um, if you don't understand, um, it's okay. Just try to follow your, try to follow along best you can. Uh, this is your kind of local area. Um, this is, you know, local host. Um, so this isn't really that important unless if you're doing some sort of self hosting thing uh, with your server. Um, aside from if config, we also have IW config and I, IW config basically shows any of the wireless connections we have. Um, obviously we are in a virtual machine, so we're not using Wi-Fi. Uh, we're just connecting uh, from our host computer, so it is not too important. Um, we also have the ping command. The ping command will basically send packets to a host. Um, so let's say we want to ping HTTPS colon slash slash Cosmodium CS dot com. Um, is that right? Or do I have to do uh, www dot? There you go. So what that does is that actually gets, you know, the uh, IP address of our website. So that's actually the IP address of CosmodiumCS.com, I believe. Uh, or maybe that one. It doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> uh, what else can we do? We can ping, um, let's say, I think 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 and that is, I think, Google's DNS or something like that. Um, but you can basically uh, send packets. So this is a good way to check your internet connection. Also a good way to find, quickly find the IP address of a target our clients um, that you may be working with. Um, then we have the address resolution protocol, also known as ARP. Um, if you're familiar with um, networking, um, or I guess if you're not familiar with networking, ARP basically connects our IP address to a MAC address, um, so that way the network can easily locate your device and some connections and all that fun stuff. So we can do ARP and kind of just see, hey, um, that's kind of like the um, interface right here. You can see for iPhase, Ethernet zero, um, and then that's the hardware address right there. You can even do an ARP Tech A, I believe, um, to get that more formatted version of, you know, that's the IP address that is, you know, being connected to that MAC address um, on the network. So that's what ARP is doing. Um, cool. We also have Netstat. Netstat will kind of get the network status um, of the computer. Right. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, you know, stuff here. Um, I don't have to go through that, but if we do net stat tech, and uh, I believe this shows all the ports uh, that are open or that we're connected to. Yeah. Um, so yeah, those are all the ports um, that we are connected to. Pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so network status shows the, or net stat shows the network status. Uh, pretty straightforward. Um, next up, I guess we have the route command. So route, um, route command basically gets the routing of our network, right? So we can kind of see um, the destination, the gateway, uh, mask, and then flags, metric. These are different flags. These flags are different uh, from the bash flags we were talking about earlier. Um, but you can basically see some basic IP routing information through the uh, route command. 
Um, so that's pretty straightforward and I guess it should be pretty easy, right? Uh, we can also start services with uh, our Linux terminal, which is pretty cool. So let's say we start a, uh, um, so we basically have the ability to uh, start and stop services. So we'll do service and then, ooh, I'm sure you can hear that street racing. Uh, it's pretty popular from where I live. Uh, but yeah, so we can do service um, and then the name of the service. So we'll just do um, service start. Just for an example, right? Um, obviously, cancel. Um, so service, right, would be the command to start the service or to select the service. Then we put the name of the service we want to start and then we can do start. And then to counteract this, right, you hit arrow keys to go up into your previous um, history and then down to you can hit the up arrow to go into your history and such. You can actually even type history to see your um, history of commands that you've written. Um, but yeah, so if we do um, service stop, this will basically stop the service that we are starting. So let's start. Let's try some different services, right? So one service we can actually start um, is a web server. Um, so we can go ahead and start a web server by using Apache. So we can do service and then Apache two start and what this is going to do uh we can put our root password in there that basically started a web server um on our computer actually i think if we we can actually visit our uh, um web server i believe let me go ahead and do an if config get our ip address um so this, so we can copy that, paste that, and there you go. So you can see Apache too. So that, that's our IP address right there. Um, we can see the Apache web server is being hosted. So now we have a uh, web server being hosted. You have a dub dub, fo dub folder. Um, I believe it's in your temp directory, if I am not mistaken. CD into slash temp slash www. Um, hold, where is the... Is it oh no 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 it's um it's var right so v a r w w w yeah perfect so this is where you can actually host your web server in here uh, if I list HTML uh, yeah there's an index HTML so yeah this is the basic um um you know website web hosting service so you can put a bunch of stuff in um here and you have your web server being hosted on the network so anyone else on the network. Uh, can go to this IP address and access the web server. So in security, um, you can host files onto this web server. So anyone else on the network, um, if you are sending malware through the network, you can have it download off the server. If you're trying to do any other programming related things, this is why Linux is so helpful in programming because um, you know you can actually host your own web server on your you know local network, which is like your Wi-Fi, um, and actually test out, see what the website looks like on an actual like web server, and have other people on the same network as you. Um, actually be able to access the server. So all you would have to do to make this, you know, go and reach outside of your network is um, basically you just need to set up port forwarding on your router. Um, you can just simply Google on how to do it. Um, but you, I don't think you want to do that because you're, you know, putting your machine at more accessible onto the internet. So, uh, but yeah, basically this is what allows us to, you know, host a actual web server and we can, you know, put our own HTML code stuff in there. So, but uh, we can just do CD to go back to our home directory and we'll do service Apache to stop. And we can put our password in here and there you go. So if we go back here and refresh, it's going to have no idea what we're talking about because this web server is no longer being hosted. Awesome. So let's try another server. Let's do SSH. Um, so we can do service SSH start. And then we can put our password in here. Um, and now we're starting an SSH server. So people can actually remotely get a secure shell onto um, this computer. Uh, people can simply do SSH and then our username, which is blue C at our IP address, which is uh, this IP address right here. Uh, obviously we would just be SSH SSHing into our own computer right now. Um, but if you had a different computer, um, you would be able to SSH into it. Obviously, we're on our own computer, so it's not going to work well. Um, but you can go ahead and do such things. Um, 
Yeah, so yeah, see, I was, I just closed the connection, but that was basically me SSH'd into um, the, myself. I was SSH'd into myself, uh, but I just closed the connection by hitting Control D. Um, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and stop that service, right? So we can do service SSH uh, stop to stop the service. We can type our password in and we will no longer need to use SSH to remotely have. So for those of you guys who don't know, SSH is basically just to get a remote terminal to a computer. Um, so if you want like a terminal like this and remotely access the terminal of a computer, you can use SSH. That's basically what it is in its simplest form. Um, so we can also host, you know, things like an SQL server. Um, I won't actually do this one, but just to put the point across, right? We can do uh, some backspaces here and then post uh, gray SQL. And this will allow you to start a uh, SQL server. Now I'm not gonna run it, but just to kind of, you know, put that out there. You can even do service tour. Uh, you can even start tour. So if you wanna, you know, surf um, the web more anonymously, uh, you can use tour. Tor is also known as the unrounder, uh, basically is a more anonymized networking um, way of, you know, browsing the internet and such. They're, Plenty of people who explain a little bit better than me, um, and I could explain it, but this course is not focused on Tor, it's focused on Linux. Um, but basically, you could start the Tor service uh, for those who know who it is or what Tor is. Um, I'm sure you guys are very appeased by this, um, and that's kind of you know, one of the cool features um, that Linux does offer. So, we can actually start uh, these services with ease. Um, but that is pretty much going to be it when it comes to the bare bone basics of Linux. Obviously, it is a normal, you know, operating system. So we do have, you know, things like a web server or like, you know, browsing the internet. You guys have other applications. You have um, things like internet things, graphics, um, you know, games, whatever, and programming tools, um, system tools, whatever. Um, you can use it just like a normal computer. Now, obviously, things like Perry and Kali are focused for the um, intent of cybersecurity, but hey, you can use it for um, you know, pretty much, I guess, you know, the intention of this course and, you know, whatever else you may be working on. But uh, we can go ahead and look at, you know, basically the conclusion of, you know, this presentation about how, you know, Linux is generally just an amazing operating system. Um, we'll be using it very often. Um, just within the courses throughout the, you know, Cosmos DS website, Cosmos DS.com slash courses, um, and other, you know, areas within computer science and such. So uh, Linux is something that is just really good to learn and understand. Um, feel free to keep diving into it. Learn how to make, you know, other users and groups on the operating system. Learn how to use other parts of Bash um, and grow your skill sets. But this is kind of a good Linux fundamentals course on teaching you basics of Linux, how to orient yourself through the language or of Bash and um, how to orient yourself through Linux and all of that. Um, but yeah, stay happy, stay positive, and as always, happy hacking. Hey hackers, Blue Cosmo from CCS here, and I wanted to introduce you guys to the Happy Hacker Site Plan. The Happy Hacker Site Plan is a plan where you guys can support us for only $1 a month. That's right, $1. With this comes exclusive benefits like courses, articles, videos, and access to our entire cybersecurity knowledge base. Um, if this interests you and you guys want to um, get access to all this, check out the link in the description. It's only $1, so we definitely appreciate your guys' support. Um, anyway, enjoy the video and uh, happy hacking.